Hello again, everyone. Great and Gay here with the newest episode of, Re of my Revolution 3 Let's Play. I think it's Evolution. Sorry. Episode number 7 by now. So, today we're finally going to dig into Mutania after that unscheduled, uh, you know, break last episode. So, yeah, let's get on with it. But before I do that, I want to ask you all one question. You may have already noticed I still got grass for the floor here, so I want you guys to tell me what kind of flooring you'd like to see in my base. I'm very much open for suggestions at this point because, well, I'm terrible at picking such things myself. The bit of stone brick is here to uh, the brick. <laughs> The little bit of stone bricks here is because there's lava under there and I don't want things to catch on fire. But yeah, other than that, I need something to, to you know, replace the grass with. I'll, I'll watch the comments closely, see what you guys think. But until then, I'll just get on back... I'll just get back to working on Botania. And I'm sorry if I sound a bit frazzled. That's pretty much my def default state right now. Um, yeah. See you guys in a little bit once I've uh, built out a little area where I can make my Tenya stuff. So, be right back. So, a little while later and the tunnel that previously only went to the left now also goes to the right. And on the minimap you can already see my new, soon-to-be, Botania area. Now, building this thing took a little longer than planned, first because I found out I had built it too far to the east, so it wouldn't line up the way I wanted it, then because my game crashed when I opened the backpack, and finally I also did a bit of uh, clearing out some unruly neighbors who were being a bit loud and a bit dead, of course. But yeah, here I am again, ready to get started with Botania. Now, is anyone... Okay, the first thing I'm going to need for Botania is a slightly more reliable source of water. And I could build another one of those uh, big, complicated uh, multi-blocks like I've got over there. But for this one I'm going to take the easy route. Not cheating, of course, because it's an intended mechanism and the way it's uh, set up suggests that it's still very much the way it's supposed to be done. Um, for which I'm going to need a bit of steel. I'm going to throw away a bunch of stuff I don't need right now. Uh, let's put that away. Still hanging on to those delighted meals from uh, last episode. Uh, anyhow, first thing I'm going to need is a petal. I think you spell it that way. Yeah, a petal apothecary. So, need a mystical white petal, some cobblestone, and some more cobblestone. Pretty much the cheapest thing in Botania you can make, and one of the reasons why it's such a useful mod to start out with. The moment you've got access to cobblestone, you can you can make yourself the basics of the basics, and the moment you have gold, you can get started on anything slightly more complicated. Um, petals next. I've been carrying around this flower pouch for a while, collecting mystical flowers as I went around. So now I just need to grab one of these flowers, brown one will do, and craft it into a pair of petals. And that's the petal apothecary. Um, next I'm going to need a sink. I think I'll make a wooden one. Uh, which takes a bunch of iron and a few wooden logs. Huh, looks like it's even cheaper than I thought. In any case, iron, logs, 
I have what I need. Now if only any I would recognize that I have what it takes, I can just... Oh, I guess it needs to be uh, one of the, you know, vanilla kinds of wood. Eh, worst case scenario, I'll have to go out and grab some uh, stone and make it with that instead, because I kind of do need it right now. But I have a bit of canonical wood laying about. Still not. Weird. Uh, let me see. Oh, I have music coming up. In any case, I can also make it with stone. I guess that I'll have to do. And of course, I have a bunch of stone with me. There we go, a sink. The nice thing about a sink is that it's an infinite water source. The downside is that it only works if you're a player who right clicks it with the bucket. Off the top of my head. Let's see if that got nerfed at all. I see it changed. Nope, no nerfs so far. So, all I gotta do now is slap down this one, pump it full of water, and I can get started. First thing I am going to need is a pure daisy, which is where those 3x3 uh, three three patches are going to come in. A pure daisy takes full white petals and a single seed of pretty much any kind. Let me run back to grab a few. <laughs> That's why I forget my head wasn't screwed on tight. Um, I really got enough uh, seeds to quickly grab some, but oh, well. it's a harvest. There we go. Oops, oh my. Um, yeah. So, the basic crafting in Britannia with the petal apothecary is fairly straightforward. You just toss the petals in one by one. You can look at it with like that and it'll tell you what it makes. So now it just needs a seed to make a pure date. Ta-da! Pure date. Let's make another one because two is always better than one. And, oh, little uh, little useful thing there. Just right click, add back to the last recipe to quickly make another. Now, pure daisy is the first basic flower that you're going to need to get anything done in Botania because if you plant it down like this and surround it either with stone or with wooden logs, you can see that they start sparkling. Over time, the stone will convert into living stone and the wood will turn into living wood. It looks pretty alive to me right now, but uh, I guess since I chopped it down it's not technically alive. In any case, both of which, both of those two, are pretty important ingredients to get anything done in Britannia beyond the basics of the basics. Uh, where did I leave my axe? Here I left my axe. So yeah, this can take a minute but it's not too slow, thankfully. Just something that, if you want a lot of it, is a good idea to out automate. Okay, that sentence didn't really go the way I wanted it to, but basic idea, if you need a lot of living rock or a lot of living wood, plant it ahead of time and harvest it regularly. Whoa, I'm being shot at. So, it's a little while later, I now have half a stack of living rock, half a stack of living wood, plenty to get started with the next step. See, Botania has a rather involved system of mana and stuff that uses it, so the next thing on my to-do list is to get a bit of mana going. Now, to get to the actual good stuff, you kind of need mana to get 
to get anywhere. So before we get to anything that could remotely qualify as good, we first need to make a whole bunch of bad stuff. I'm going to use as little of that bad stuff as possible, but one thing we are going to use throughout the entire Britannia progression is are these mana pools. Mana pools hold mana out in the world. Next. So yeah, it's literally a mana pool. <laughs> yeah, same part. Anyway, the next thing we know is a bit of living wood in this configuration with an ingot of gold off the top of my head. Whoops, wrong way around. There we go, a mana spreader. Mana spreaders are the default way to get mana from place A to place B and do something with it, generally something useful. Next up I'm also going to need some tool to manipulate the mana with. So I need two living wood twigs, a pair of flower petals, I'll take red and white because I like those colors. Then I craft them like this, so, and these two. Huh. One moment. Oh, it takes three, uh, three living wood twigs. My mistake, my mistake. In any case, red, white, wand of the forest. Wand of the forest are used to aim, to, amongst other things, aim mana spreaders from where they currently are looking at to somewhere else. You can, for example, do this and then this to automatically aim it straight down in there. However, it can also do another thing, which is what we're going to do next. Um, let me look up what it was called again. So, uh, generating flora. The first thing we're going to need is a day. Day bloom is the basic passive mana generating flower. It has a number of drawbacks, though. For one, it only works by day. So once night falls, it doesn't generate any mana. Second, it only generates mana extremely slowly. But third, most importantly, after a little while, day blooms wither away and turn into dead bushes. So yeah, they're good for an initial little bit of uh, mana, but after that, you're best off quickly switching to something a little more permanent. So I'm going to need two white um, petals, two orange one. no wait, one orange one, uh, and then either cyan or light blue. Light blue. Okay, so craft them into petals. Yeah, and I don't know where that uh, elephant trumpet is coming from either. It just kind of sounds all... It, it, you just kind of hear it every now and then. Anyhow, I'm kind of out of uh, seeds right now, so let me just sleep through the night and then go whack a few bushes right outside my house. It's not like uh, I can't regrow them if I ever need to. Sorry, it's not like I can't regrow them when I need them. So, two seeds, two of the uh, ingredients. So, yeah. Like the uh, pure daisy, you make them by throwing the appropriate petals into the apothecary, followed by a seed, which gives me a neat little achievement and gives me my first day blue, which I'll plant right here. Now, looking at it with my uh, day bloom, uh, sorry, wand of the forest, I can see that the day bloom is bound to the mana spreader because of that glowing outline. That means that whenever this day bloom generates mana, it goes straight into the mana spreader. And if you look closely, the mana spreader has built up two pixels of power worth of mana. 
off the top of my head, I believe that by the time it reaches four or five pixels, it fires a burst into the mana pool, but it can be a whole lot more than that. It could even be like one-eighth full instead of any number of pixels. In any case, I'll just make another one, again using the... Oh darn, it didn't show up. Oh well, too bad. I make a second day bloom to make it go twice as fast, so I only have to wait half way to forever to get there. And yeah. Now, I can imagine that you are wondering... Okay, now that sounds pretentious as can be, so yeah. The reason why I need all that mana which is now finally in the pool. You can see that the pool has got a little, uh, a little bit of mana in it, just barely a pixel worth. But yeah, the reason why I need it is because I wanted to make a different basic plant that for one will not wither and for another generates a whole lot faster. I am going to make an endo flame. In any case, endoflame. As you can see, the endoflame requires mana powder. And mana powder is made by throwing either gunpowder, redstone, glowstone, sugar, or any floral powder into a mana pool with at least a little bit of mana in it. And joy oh joy, we have a mana pool with just a little bit of mana in it. On the other hand, we still need some floral powder, which is the easiest way to get... the easiest thing to get that can be turned into uh, mana dust, or whatever it was called. So we're going with that first. So, to make floral powder you need a few mystical petals, like so. Uh, you, and next you need... Hold on. Next you're going to need a Britannia pestle and mortar, easy enough to make. Let me, let me just get on with that right now. In any case, pestle and mortar, add a mystical petal of any color, and you get a floral powder of the same color. It's that easy. Now let's see, I've got seven, I need one more. Because I'm going to make eight of those endo flames, I'll need eight of those uh, mana powders, or whatever they're called. So, just gonna grab one more yellow one, because we have a ton of those. Grind up one of them into yellow powder. By the way, you can also use these as yellow, uh, as colored dyes. Which makes Botania a good way to get early, um, well, early dyes if you need them for anything. Anyway, crafting up the uh, mana powder, or what it's called, yeah, mana powder, is as easy as crafting those flowers. You just look at the mana pool, throw it in, and once the mana runs out, it just tells you bluntly that no, you can't make any more of them right now because your entire mana system is fueled by a pair of slow, slow day blooms. In any case, we now have two of them, two uh, mana powders, so let's get on with the end of flame. The end of flame, by the way, is the first generating flower that's not a passive generating flower. Basically, it burns up uh, burnable stuff like wood or charcoal to make mana. The better the uh, fuel source you give it, the more mana you get per operation. Um, I'm gonna need to clean out my inventory and do a bit of waiting to get enough um, mana powder. So yeah, I'll be back in a little bit. See you soon! So, after entirely too, ma too much time exploring the jungle to the northeast of my house, 
sorry, my mistake, the northwest, right over there. I am finally back home, and because I spent a whole lot of time away from home, it, barely any uh, mana built up, I don't care. I now have enough for my fourth pile of mana powder, which is plenty to get me started. Also, I now have a few flowers back, so I can finally get started making four of these. Why four? Because it's a nice round number, and for reasons that will that'll become apparent soon enough. But gray... and red. Okay, gonna need those, 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 one of these, and an empty hand. So I know. Anyway, so one of these, two of those, one of those. That should alright. And of course three of these. Then just repeat the process once more. Always grand when you've got entirely too much stuff lying about, isn't it? In any case, we right click to repeat the recipe thing. Real lifesaver, so. I'm happy with that. Anyhow, four end of flames later, it's time to set up what's going to be my early um, semi permanent mana generation. Basically, I'm going to set up some uh, half assed automation. Sorry for the crude language there. Oh, it doesn't go there. Go there. So, one, two, three, four of those. I'll just let those drain out. Now I'm going to need another mana spreader or two because we're about to start generating some serious amounts of mana. Speaking of which, we still have this Black Lotus, which is an item you sometimes find in dungeons and the like. Doesn't do a whole lot on its own, but if you throw it into a mana pool with some mana in it, any amount of mana at all makes that funny sound and dissolves into a little more mana. In both cases it's too little to really be notable, but yeah. It's nice, it's a nice idea anyway. And I guess it would probably be enough to do one or two uh, crafts of, uh, you know, mana powder. So there's that too. In any case, I'm going to need another, not to be further described, petal. I'm going to need this, this, two of these. I'm just going to make another one of these because I can. Oh hey, vivid weave. Vivid wave, sorry. I will put that one down here, set this one down. Connect this one to that. Connect to that. Okay, connect this one to that. Connect this one to that. This one to that. And finally, connect this one to there. So, end of flames. How do they work? Fairly simple. Let me just grab a little bit of fuel and I'll demonstrate. As you can see, I'm a bit. Uh, I'm a bit meh right now because of all the stuff going wrong. 
So forgive me if I'm less than prepared. Anyway, you throw stuff on the ground, after a little while it picks it up, and it starts burning. As you can see, it's uh, firing mana bursts into the mana pool at a significantly higher rate than those two uh, day blooms are. And if you look into the mana spreader, you see that it's building up pretty darn fast and pumping out actually almost as fast as it can possibly pump out. If you wait a few moments, the uh, flames go out one by one, once, meaning that they'll have burnt through their little reservoir of uh, fuel, like that. And the end result is a little bit of mana in the pool. Keep in mind that each of those bursts from this one mana spreader is exactly as much mana as comes from the burst from this mana spreader. The only real difference being that the day blooms generate their mana at a much slower pace. And again, only by day. In any case, now that I've got a little more mana to work with, I'll just throw these in. This one. So I now have four um, mana powder and can get started on making the other four end of flames that I want over here. Be back in a moment once I've got those ready and waiting to go. So, welcome back. To finish off with today's kind of random assortment of stuff we did, I'm going to build a simple half-automated solution to feed, you know, fuel into the endo flames. basic idea is to drop stuff onto this pressure plate right here, and so long as there's stuff on the pressure plate, that means that the endo flames are still burning and can't get some can't get any new uh, fuel yet. The moment they can get new fuel, the item pops off the uh, pressure plate, because it's eaten by the ender flame, and, well, a new item must drop in. So, doing that is actually relatively straightforward if you know even the slightest bit about uh, Minecraft's redstone mechanics. First thing you do is you dig a little hole underneath, hope that it doesn't collapse on, the, on you, and then draw a line of redstone like that. Is that, what, is that how it's supposed to be? Now, if I, if I remember correctly, I can now put a redstone torch over here, and no, it's not getting a signal. Darn. Oh, right, right. My mistake, my mistake. Oops, there goes my shovel. Good thing I brought a spare. Um, gonna need a bit of dirt again, because that's just what I'm using right now. This goes there. There goes the elephant of mystery again. I guess that one went in there. You know what, I'm just going to lock these two so they don't pick anything up while I'm busy. So if I put this one here now and go standing on this, yep, it turns off as it should. So then I put one here, put another two of these here. So yeah, your basic, um, you know, red, red torch tower. Now, to drop stuff on the uh, plate, we're going to use something added by Botania as well. If you craft living wood into living wood planks, and then craft those living planks into an upside down U, you get an open crate. It's a bit hard to see, but the bottom of this thing... Let me just place it. The bottom of this thing is, as its name implies, open. So anything that goes into it immediately drops out to the bottom. I just kind of realized that I forgot to bring a hopper, which is the next part of the uh, things on the ingredient list. Let me just 
grab the recipe. Oh joy, it's a little plate. So let me just run downstairs and quickly smash them into plates. I'm sorry for the delays here, people. I'm doing this as fast as I can, but I'm just human. And of course, the darn thing breaks, so I will need some more sticks, some more iron, and a piece of string I forgot to bring. Sorry. I swear, if, if my head wasn't screwed on tight, I'd probably have lost it somewhere, sometime today. Well, it took another two irons, so let me just grab another pair. And I really should start building on that uh, plate press thing from I mentioned before, because it makes the process a lot cheaper. Anyway, now that I've got that, I'm going to need two more wood. Uh, let me see, planks. I can combine these into planks, I think. I can't. Come on, I just need one more plank. Darn it. Anyway. Hopper, finally. I could have made a wooden hopper, but those can only point down, and I want this one to point to the side for reasons that become obvious pretty soon. Anyway, hopper goes here, hope it doesn't fall. Let me let me actually just do oh no, not that. No, no. Where's my pickaxe? Yeah, that. And then put this here and this. Here, it should give just about enough support to keep it from collapsing. Finally, chest goes there. Now, let me just run back yet again, this time to grab a bit of fuel and give a demonstration of what I just built. So, 16, uh, 16 char charcoal, that's enough to feed each of these endoflames twice. Just throw it in there, and it falls onto the pressure plate. Huh. Weird, they're all lighting up at the same time. Anyway, the fact that they are now eating them up one by one is a good indication that the system works. If the system wouldn't have worked, then they'd keep falling until the entire thing is empty, but... That's not the case, so it's working. How it works is still pretty simple. Charcoal falls on the pressure plate. Pressure plate deactivates the... Oh, darn it. Those guys occasionally pop up when you break dirt with your hands or anything besides a shovel. Anyway, whenever there's a piece of charcoal on the pressure plate, this redstone torch is turned off. Whenever that redstone torch is turned off, let me just fill this up real quick. Whenever it's filled up, okay. Whenever that redstone torch is turned off, this one is turned on, and whenever that torch is on, this um, hopper is blocked from feeding items into the open crate, which keeps things from falling down. So, whenever one of the endo flames eats what's on the pressure plate, the lock on the hopper is released, and you can and one item can fall through before it's re-engaged. Net result: once I put a bunch of uh, fuel in there, I don't have to worry any bit about about what happens next. It'll just feed them one by one until the mana pool is full, in which case the mana spreaders fill up and these guys won't draw any more fuel. So, anyway, 
My apologies for the kind of messy episode. Um, I'm trying my best here. It doesn't always work out the way I want to. You know how it is with Minecraft, right? In any case, this is the end of the episode. Again, let me know what you think of the episode. Please leave as many comments as you feel like. Please keep the racism down if you kindly, if you'd be so kind. And let me know what you think I should use for flooring, because that's still a thing I'm thinking about. Anyway, this has been Ray 10 k and see you next time with a little more Batania when we finally get into some of the more useful things you can do with the mod. Goodbye for now.